that's all you that's all you need to yeah. make money man is a drive that's all you need to be mm-hmm. anything yeah is is uh you know that that perseverance that dedication you need to stay dedicated welcome everyone to visions avengers here um i have another wonderful episode with my friend cesar uh he's gonna share what he does he's gonna share um just very knowledgeable and good information here so i'm really excited and i'm gonna introduce him here so cesar um if you want to go ahead and explain uh you know what you do and your business and all that yeah um i'm a tattoo artist and i am a business owner i own partially own two tattoo shops one in park city and one in west jordan um i've been tattooing for about two years now Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. I don't see myself doing anything else anymore. Dang. That's my passion. <laughs> and so, so the, your shop is, uh, what was the One Love? Yeah, uh, it's called One Love Tattoos. Uh, it used to be called Aloha, but now it's One Love Tattoos. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So I so go on to, because uh, I went to your shop, of course. Uh, Seth said here, he did such amazing work on, on my hand here. Um, but going on your shop, I noticed some art that was on, on the wall. And so, how is it that you, that inspired you to do become a tattoo artist? Um, I've always been an artist. Yeah. Like my earliest memories as a kid is drawing, or like playing around with the macaroni on the ta- on the chair or something. Um, but uh, at a certain time in my life, I started to just draw a lot more mm-hmm. than I usually did. I had nothing else to do, so um, I started drawing a lot more. Um, then I met my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you should, you should be a tattoo artist, you know? And I started playing around with this kit that my, br- my brother gave me. And uh, it was like a cheap Amazon kit. But mm-hmm. I was using it on fake skin. And I was tattooing on oranges. Um, and from there, it just, it just kind of took off. I was like, oh, man, this is fun. I think I'm kind of good at it. Yeah. I started doing other stuff. And I'm like, oh, this feels natural. It feels yeah. like an extension of myself. And uh, here we are. <laughs> yeah. I... What, when I saw the uh, the art in, um, and I want to bring this up is because you showed the the work on your art was like on, on your shop was the dots right? Oh yeah, um, that's pointillism. Pointillism. Yeah. So when I do it on paper, it's called pointillism, and it's actually a technique that I uh, that I use in tattooing too. Yeah. Uh, but in tattooing, it's called whip shading, um, but it's just to achieve the like the same the same style, the same look. Um, but yeah, on paper, it takes me. 20 times longer than on, <laughs> on a tattoo yeah and i wanted to bring that up because i as i after you you know we finished with the work on my hand i noticed that it resembled what uh-huh. was on on the art that's on the wall and so it kind of for me it just shows that the true artist right and, and within you and it kind of shows that how you combine those you make yeah. those work and, and it's great stuff right like it's great combination and awesome work on that um so you meet your wife and then your your girlfriend and then from there, so she kind of, you know, pushes, not, not really pushes you, but kind of leads you. Yeah, through. after I tried it, I straight up told her, I was like, I think I think I fell in love with this. She didn't really have to really push me any more than that. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that she always, she always kept me motivated, though. So that yeah. was important because I knew that going into being a tattoo artist, it's a, it's totally like your own boss type of thing. You have yeah. to learn to build your own clientele. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, you have to learn how to market yourself yeah. and um, I knew there was a lot that I had to do going into it, um, and we're still working on it. But she helped me motivate me, and she still helps me motivate myself to, you know, get better. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, with the, with so with she, you know, you're getting starting on that. Was there some challenges that you faced as far as like in the beginning process that uh, you were like, man, maybe I shouldn't kind of be doing this? <laughs> yeah, I messed up. I messed up her thigh. I think I did my first tattoo on her. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I messed up her thigh. I did this, this ugly little tulip. It's just not ugly, but I drew it for her and we just slapped it on her thigh and she just let me do it. I was like, oh, wow. Dance. This girl just lets me scar her body. Yeah. <laughs> um, so from there, I, I needed to, like, uh, you know, repent myself i guess you know mm-hmm. fix my the way I, I do things because i have to i had to fix that tattoo somehow yeah <laughs> so i just kept practicing and kept drawing um and i just kept loving it more and more mm-hmm. so yeah it all started with that one crappy tattoo on my yeah. wife she has good ones now a lot yeah a lot of a really good work that i've done but yeah i started with one crappy tattoo well it's, it's like you know it's it's 
taking that and going from there and learning from it but what's good too now like you I mean your wife is 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 blessed and lucky to have yeah. you know a, a tattoo artist just like yourself you know yeah it's like and hey like for free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know what i'm saying but it's it's like it's it's very known like okay she took it upon getting this done when i was barely starting off and i'm like well, girl what you want you know and stuff yeah like that, so yeah seriously it's it's gone pretty far from there yeah <laughs> uh when you what's one thing that you do as far as like trying to um you mentioned right like the marketing and clientele mm-hmm. and all that how how is it easy hard like to keep- oh it's so difficult <laughs> <laughs> um to me like making content and stuff has always been entertaining actually uh but it's just kind of hard to catch the algorithm and mm-hmm. the only time that you really can is when you actually have to invest mm. and you know put money down and pay for your marketing so that really takes off um i myself haven't paid for any i'm mm-hmm. trying to just grow my personal instagram yeah. portfolio uh organically mm-hmm. um but for our business we do pay yeah. quite a bit of money in order for all of the artists to yeah make their bread because you're you're you know you with the shop it's not just you it's everyone else on there yeah but, but it's good that you're because i do uh there's, I mean, I don't notice a difference as much, but I do notice that you post some on your personal, mm-hmm. um, which is core tattoos, right? For core your, tats, core yeah. Core tats. And then on your, for the, your business one. Uh, yeah. So, but you can kind of see like you're, at least you're, you're learning that process of like trying to make mm-hmm. it, you know. Yeah. Well on your media. Yeah. We, I, I myself have just do a, do Instagram, TikTok, and I actually do Pinterest. Oh, what? I put my tattoos on Pinterest which is something I need to do more often. But yeah. yeah, so like you can see my like my work, you know how there's so many tattoos on Pinterest. Mm. I'm like, why aren't mine there, you know? It makes sense though, because like, when I was looking for like inspiration or something to get mm-hmm. done, I would go to Pinterest, mm-hmm. Google or, actually not even, yeah, Google or Pinterest, you know? Yeah. But I realized that Pinterest, I, it kind of gets down to the detail of exactly what I want to get done. Yeah, from. yeah. And Pinterest has a, it's, it's, it should be used for inspiration more than mm-hmm. anything. Um, but it's it's totally a mark. It's all marketing. Yeah, honestly. Um, and then we also the, the shop itself actually advertises on the radio. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we have a deal with I think ninety two point five. It sucks that I don't know this off the top of my head. But Big Buddha. Yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I saw that on the on the Instagram. Yeah, Big Buddha. Uh, he's actually one of my clients. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I tattoo I tattoo him. I didn't know who he was honestly. You just like. <laughs> yeah, and then it turns out that he's like a local. A yeah. local celebrity that yeah. he was like on Fox 13 and uh, KSL That's and pretty on the cool. radio. So he's been around. He used yeah. to be an MC in nightclubs. My mm. clients know him. Like, oh, yeah, I know him from back in the day. Yeah. I'm like, tell him if he remembers me. Yeah. So everybody, everybody knows him. So just having my work on him is already marketing. Yeah. You know? It's it's really cool because he's he's a walking spokesperson. Mm-hmm. People are gonna ask him about his tattoos. Yeah, and he wants a whole sleeve. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Like, uh, and I feel like when tattooing, I mean, you can correct me, but since it's your since it's your you as artist art on there, right? It's pretty much like an ad, right? So when someone sees like, oh yeah. man, where'd you get that done? Like, it's basically free ad for you. Oh, which yeah. You don't really see it that way. You're just like, hey, I'm putting this art, this masterpiece yeah. on them, right? Exactly. But you're walking and, you, and someone's like, oh yeah, man, like, you know, says that over here from yeah. tattoos, you know, they, you know, uh, you know, they did it or, you know, stuff like that. So you can... There's, um, what's the word? There's steps to yeah. it whenever I plan a tattoo. So in, initially, yes, like I am inspired to give them really good work. But the second thought that I have after that is that this tattoo is going to be out there in the world. Yeah. And people are going to ask who did it. Yeah. So I do know that I have to put out good work because I want people to ask who mm. did that tattoo. Like that's always that's always on, on my mind whenever I it's like do a tattoo. Like it has to be that good that people have to ask about it. Yeah. Is there a certain, uh, speaking of like uh, celebrities and is there someone that you're you kind of like, oh man, I really would love to have an art a tattoo on this person or... Uh, someone that would inspire <laughs> you like someone that do you have i guess i could say do you have someone in the in, in the in that industry that inspires you to like, yeah um oh man well there's so many tattoos out there in the and like and like i don't think they're always gonna get tattooed by me but uh i had a dream once that i i i was friends with post malone oh because i tattooed nice, yeah. him and he like wanted me to hang out yeah. with him and he became like 
like we became like personal yeah clients and personal friends um but that was just a dream <laughs> it'd be cool to put a tattoo on post yeah. malone i mean if he doesn't really have much room though <laughs> yeah <laughs> i saw that yeah but he has he has some cool tattoos he has shitty tattoos but i mean i think most people have shitty tattoos they have a lot of tattoos yeah um but yeah post malone, post malone. <laughs> that's that's good yeah as uh, as i'm like thinking of like oh that'd be some, something good to kind of find you know, yeah find and the out. main reason i thought of him i was like he's like the only local huge person in utah mm-hmm. It's Post Malone because yeah. he has a house here in Conlon Heights. Yeah. And I think it's still. I think for me, like, uh, I mean, I'm trying to, not about me, but I just want to throw it out there real quick. When I was, uh, I guess, growing up or seeing videos, uh, TV, it's like Kat Von D, you know, was kind of like, oh, oh I yeah. want to get someone, you know, tattooed. Yeah, she's her. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she's blacking out her whole body. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So. But she's a, she's a big one. Um, my wife really likes her. Yeah. Yeah. I learned more about her through my wife. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. So, uh, with your, uh, as this, your business is growing, um, do you kind of see that? Like, as far as be like, Hey wife, you know, I want to bring you, like, is she, does she help with any part of the business or is it just, um, she criticizes my tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, she's my best critic critique actually yeah. she's my best judge she's always she always rips me a new one when she sees my tattoo she's yeah. like hmm, lines could have been better but if they're like crispy clean and she's yeah. just giving me crap but i mean i like it i mean i rather hear critiques and my tattoos and compliments to mm-hmm. be honest so she helps me in that and then obviously she just makes sure that um i'm healthy and fed yeah when i go to work so she's yeah important. no you can tell like it's it that thing for me uh well when I hear you, as someone being an entrepreneur, business owner, um, and just being so creative like you, especially like, you know, it, it shows me, and it really is awesome when they have a partner, spouse, mm-hmm. or even someone in the family, you know, that kind of just is building them, building them up and yeah. having that. She's cool. And I'm really blessed that my whole family is uh, very happy with what I do. Mm-hmm. And it, it, that means a lot because they're, 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 they're Catholics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're Mexican, <laughs> so they're not very fond of me having tattoos. But they they think they think that it's crazy, the way that I do tattoos on people. Yeah. They really like it. But the tattoos are like, do you have like a usually like a meaning behind them, or is it just kind of like uh, the ones I have? That ones you have? Um, no, man. I was like, that's cool. They look they look <laughs> nice. They look yes. Yeah, yeah, this so, one I was like, I've always wanted some sort of knife right here. Yeah. And those are two hearts that the, it's like a small katana. And then uh, these, my friend Nico actually drew them by hand. Oh, wow. This one is a, it's, I guess you can't use the, the word gypsy anymore. So she's a, she's a Moroccan woman mm. um, with her boobs and one of her boobs is hanging out. <laughs> and everybody says that it looks like my wife. So I just say that are it's my kidding? wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't planned to be, he drew it. Yeah. Um, and then this is just uh, another one that he drew. I just kind of let him have fun with this one. A lot of people don't really know what it is, but it's like a eagle talon coming yeah. out holding a tattoo machine. Um, and then I have more yeah. in the rest of my body. They're all just cool. That's pretty. That's really it. On my leg, I practice. Yeah. So I yeah, I practice all the tattoos that I That's have crazy. on this leg. Like, um, yeah, I had yeah. to. I was like, I need to dedicate a part of my body just so I can know how it feels. Oh, and, true. Yeah. Not long after I tattooed my wife, I tattooed myself. That's crazy. So I was like, okay, I think I need to underst- understand what I'm doing to people yeah. when I tattoo them. And uh, that's helped. that helped me a lot. That helped me become a better artist. Yeah, what's... Um, oh my gosh, I just had it and it spaced it out. But would you say, like, someone trying to get a tattoo, is it something, like, let's say they don't have an idea. They have an idea, but it, and they're like, hey, I don't know exactly what I want to do with the idea. Do you, like, help them out with that? or? Yeah, so... Yeah, I feel like the best tattoos happen when um, you just have a conversation with your artist. Mm-hmm. And maybe you that's all you have is an idea. Um, and if you don't have one, the conversation still helps because they ask the right questions. Mm-hmm. Like they guide you to like, um, like what what symbolism do you have in your life that means a lot mm-hmm. to you? Is there is there a, a family member that you like? Or do you just want something sick? You yeah. just want something cool. You want to look through my artwork, mm-hmm. you know, figure out the style that they like, show them different examples of style and see which one stands out to them. And then go from there, try and, you know, become a chameleon and uh, imitate that style, mm-hmm. but still put your mark on it. You know, okay. um, 
those are the fun ones because they give us more creative freedom mm. and that's when you get a good tattoo you know yeah. pinterest is cool and all but it's it's use, we should use it for inspiration rather than to yeah. copycat correct know? but i i knew that I, when i put my tattoos on pinterest that someone was going to try and do the exact same yeah one. um i found that kind of exciting yeah you know i was like i want to see if they can do what i can do yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool because yeah. like sometimes like you know it's like is is it getting the same tattoo as someone already has it right It'd probably be some other state oh yeah. by some other country but like I, I i guess for it be that scared of like going to a tattoo artist and then just getting that same tattoo or not mm-hmm. usually having that creativity where they kind of change yeah that happens a lot yeah yeah that does it's it's actually really common yeah um so that's why i teach my apprentices good mm-hmm. artistry uh, I teach them how to draw, nonetheless, like more than anything, before they learn how to really start laying ink mm-hmm. on, on skin or fake skin. I was like, they need to understand design fundamentals and all that so that when they start doing stuff, it's usually stuff that they drew out yeah. that no one else has. Yeah. Um, so that's important, too. Because our shop, I'm not going to lie, they, you know, we're a walk-in street shop, so yeah. they will do what people bring to them okay. completely, our walk-in artists. Yeah. But... Um, they still take that as an opportunity. They have a conversation with the client. They're mm-hmm. like, "All right, let's let's change some stuff out of this so that mm-hmm. it's more unique." Yeah. And that's that's what our artists are actually really good at. Wow. Well, as I wanted to go back, but you said so when you're you're instructing your apprentice and all that, or like you know helping them out, advising mm-hmm. them and all that. Was this something in in high school or school that you that you learn, or is it your pick? You picked it up as as it went with life, right? Um, I went to college for uh, for graphic design. Oh, we did. Yeah, and okay. uh, they taught me design fundamentals, huh. and I've I've kept those here. They've helped me a lot. Wow. When I learned, I was like, oh, that's why my nose is looked weird. <laughs> that's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's why that's why things don't look like they're cohesive. Yeah. You know? And uh, that helped a lot. I'm just teaching them what I learned in college, basically. Yeah. But, like, on tattoos. Yeah. Uh, well, also, uh, I was going to say, I just spaced it out. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I just had it, too, and I was going to say <laughs> something, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, with the... Does someone need to be an uh, artist, like, you know, to be a tattoo artist oh, or is it is it as long as you're good with doing the lines or because for even. me i see it though because like when you put that it's called a stencil right is that yeah what it's called? when i see it on on it on social media it's like they just put it on there mm-hmm. but there's no details yet mm-hmm. so how do you get those details in there uh references you know like you have the ipad next uh-huh. to you um or uh if you don't want a reference i try and not use references yeah uh, if you don't want a reference you just whatever comes out of your brain basically mm-hmm. yeah and a lot of artists do that now um that's what good artistry is yeah and the reason and i like that you said that because i don't remember you having the reference of my tattoo that you no maybe, yeah you just <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just, you know I, I just that's yeah that's exactly what i did yeah so that's crazy because i'm like I, I guess that's what you know i felt more good about going with you because it's like and uh, seeing the work on social media right it's totally like it but experiencing yourself and now thinking about it, like, yeah, Cesar didn't have any. Of he just <laughs> was going with the flow, but he made it yeah. look great, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I knew what the design looked like. Yeah. I knew it was the drawing that your wife yeah. did. Um, but it wasn't exactly, uh, like, you couldn't exactly transfer that over to a tattoo mm. because it would compromise quality. Mm-hmm. So I try and get that similar area and yeah. fill it in um, the way that the tattoo looked. So okay. it has a skeleton, you know? yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, we turned it into what a tattoo would look like mm-hmm. if that if that was a tattoo, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna heal well. The techniques yeah. we use and everything yeah. that's really important. Um, because if I did that exact same drawing, it wouldn't it wouldn't heal right. Yeah. Things would expand over themselves and mm. just be a blob. That's crazy. So uh, the way I did it is I used a lot of skin tone. Yeah. Um, uh, so that things can be legible mm-hmm. from a distance too, and then I use really dark ink. Yeah. So that it just stays darker over time. Yeah. I was kind of uh, scared, like, you know, after being such a long time without getting one, mm-hmm. is that I just go in and, and someone just does exactly what's on the paper instead of, like, their own, their own spin their yeah. own spin on it, but making it at good, you know, like, knowing, okay, if I do this, it's not going to look good mm-hmm. later on, you know? Yeah. So that's that was big, like, just being nervous about it. Like, I don't yeah. want exactly what's there. I want something that they can just do it. 
usually after the first conversation with your artist yeah. that's when you start kind of catching the vibe yeah of like who they are and a good artist will ask the right questions you know or sometimes i do this i just grab it i'm like all right bet i'll be right back <laughs> yeah. i grab them i put them on the table and i'm like this is what you're getting yeah and it's similar to what they got but i drew it up and they're like yeah. oh my god that's beautiful yeah. i've never really had a lot of people say i hate it mm. they're just like well let's change this and that yeah um but in the end of the day i'm trying to give them something unique you know mm -hmm. and i still try to give them exactly what they want yeah. um sometimes what they didn't know they wanted is yeah. usually what i try and go for that's awesome um And obviously, they don't always come with the best references, mm -hmm. so I have to fix stuff. Yeah. And usually, my clients, I've, I've had like once a client that, that was like, I want exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, but a skill to have as an artist is knowing how to talk to people mm -hmm. and knowing knowing how to, you know, sell yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can still have that conversation with that client and try and let them know yeah. why exactly that isn't okay. Yeah. Because we try and become, you know, even though we're a street shop, we still try and yeah. give them unique work. Right. One thing that I learned uh, as I've been listening to so many awesome, you know, awesome guests here, and it's and even for myself, like certain things that I take is when you start educating them, you 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 still have to sell them as an artist, right, or as whatever your your business does. But as you're educating them, they're understanding more, and that's how you get. It makes it easier on the seller, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And so, as someone, I would, if that's why for me, like, I would want to have someone that's like, tell me, yo, like, I see what you're saying, but as an artist, as my business, what I do, like, I'm just letting you know this would look better and just have that trust on that artist, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do get a lot of, a lot of like first timers yeah. that are very nervous during the conversation. Um, and I teach my, apprentices to be personable mm. we're not going to be our our business our business model actually includes that we're mm. a personable um artist type yeah. of shop you know you don't you don't want to you don't have to come in stressed out like yeah when you come into the shop we have like water fountains mm -hmm. and like music playing yeah. and our all of all of our artists use wireless machines so you don't hear the buzzing mm. that's that's scary i don't know if you noticed that i don't it's think just I music yeah you know all right, true, true. it's just vibes and every artist has their own music it's just yeah. a good environment it's like you're coming into like a mm -hmm. like a place you already knew yeah you know that you don't have to freak out about there's mints on the table mm -hmm. there's drinks to have yeah there's even weed gummies in case you really need it <laughs> legal yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um But yeah, after after they come in, we try and give them that that uh, experience of uh -huh. you know relaxation because we already know that they're freaking out, mm -hmm. and we already know that they they have no idea how to talk to a tattoo yeah. artist, and they're gonna be probably a little stubborn, um, or they just don't know what tattoos are or how they work. You know, mm -hmm. um, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> no I, i i think you know i talked about educating and and you yeah, know so yeah, and then yeah. you said it more personal so i, I no, i I, and i think that's it, you can see it though because like i remember going in there uh for the follow-up you know and it was just i went up to one of the artists there and, and she was like yeah like let me help you out i got this you know and then it was um and she was just like even having a conversation like i've known her for such a long time you know mm -hmm. and i think for me it's like okay i, I definitely want to refer people there but also makes me want to come back again myself oh, yeah. because it's it's not like oh well i didn't tattoo him so he can yeah. go you know so, hey like let yeah. me go get the artist because he's the one that helped him out you know yeah um that was actually our apprentice was it yeah and yeah. it's part of their job oh is it well yeah. still though that's good though you know <laughs> yeah i mean if there wasn't any apprentices and there was an artist there they would do it too yeah um but yeah we teach them how to do all of that yeah. exactly because it's 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 for that reason mm -hmm. you want to go back and you want to refer yeah you know there's not going to be any other name um that's why our logo is just just a heart you know yeah. that's awesome yeah just so that we're we're the next nike logo you yeah know? good quality long lasting mm -hmm. you know the brand having the shop like how do you know when to start like at um opening like so you have two shops right mm -hmm. you he's a co-owner and stuff when did you know it was like that time to open a second one um So when I came in to uh, like like managing and being part of like the business mm -hmm. of tattooing, um, obviously I started off as an artist. Yeah. And then um, the manager at the time, Jesse, 
he he i told him i was like hey man i'm kind of getting bored if you want to give me responsibilities i'm happy mm-hmm. to take management of shop so i started managing the park city location because mm-hmm. i was work there working there three times a week yeah um they already had that when i came in mm-hmm. so they already had a murray location and the park city okay. location um and then we split from the Murray location and the, the ownership because mm-hmm. of that guy. Um, and we opened up West Jordan location mm-hmm. that was bigger with more booths, mm-hmm. more, uh, you know, bigger environment, better walk-in location. And uh, I was still managing at that point. Mm-hmm. But I, I, had, I was a crucial part of building that yeah. business because I, w- I was looking at it as my business already, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I, I'm self-employed, so mm-hmm. I want my booth to look good. I want the yeah. shop that people come into that that it's it's welcoming just as much. And um, once he noticed that I was doing all of that, he decided to offer me uh, ownership, mm. um, which is good. I took it because they already had two two shops. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't open them from the beginning, um, but we're already in planning opening a third one. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even closing one down and opening a third one, a second one somewhere else. Yeah. Because Park City is cool and everything, but it's Park City, man. Yeah. I don't want to be driving up there all the time, especially in the winter time. Yeah. And we do have artists over there that mm-hmm. that that live up They're there, right. yeah. which is good. Um, so we're still trying to figure that business mm-hmm. part out. But either way, we still want to expand and service the community. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of parts in Utah that are still, um, you know, developing very quickly. And we want to take advantage of that before it really, really Saratoga. takes over. Yeah, no, just <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. Uh, like Riverton area. Yeah, there's Riverton no, area. There's no tattoo shops yeah. there, and we've been we've been doing our you know our um, what's it called our environmental stuff. Just oh, seeing. just yeah, just uh, location based yeah. and seeing yeah, yeah, seeing all how every all of that works. Um, so I'll be a part of that as an owner, uh, but it's it's. Once you just know, once once it's happening, yeah, that you want to expand to another mm-hmm. one. Uh, first off, you need to make sure that you're out of debt. Yeah. Um, but a cool thing that we can do is that we have really good. Uh, we pay all our stuff, you know, as a shop, as a mm-hmm. business, on time. Um, so we can just grab, you know, a loan for a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars because we know we'll get approved for it and just open another one. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely important to have a have a good clean slate with all the credit yeah. bureaus. <laughs> um and i know that for sure yeah that it definitely impacts yeah well, that's pretty cool yeah and, and this is uh that's great knowledge right because uh, i think anyone starting off or or even in the you know first year whatever it's knowing um i guess when you start off you're like well how do i start off like how can i get into a business that i want to do you know mm-hmm. And it's taking that risk and, and, you know, being too able, like, okay, if I'm going to take this loan now, I got to make sure that I'm going to follow through and get yeah kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, we have to make sure that we pay all that off. <laughs> Whenever we do come into a debt situation, uh-huh. obviously, for, you know, expansion reasons, we have a business plan laid out. Like, okay, we need to pay off this debt in uh, six months. Mm-hmm. So, I'm um, like, this last shop, we're coming into finishing paying off the debt for it since we opened up in May 5th, but it was about 50-ish okay um so we can pay pretty comfortably about yeah. fifty thousand dollars worth of debt in six months that's crazy as a business man. um so we want to continue to just withhold that business structure and mm-hmm. continue to expand it so that it just becomes easier and easier yeah so that the next tattoo shop we open up um doesn't really have to be big you yeah. know a, a simple four booth shop mm-hmm. comforting environment and a busy location uh, to service the walk-in community is all we really want. Mm-hmm. And then expand from there, you know? Yeah. Be like your one-stop shop for tattoos and for piercings that are good quality. Mm. Um, and obviously, as we expand, it starts becoming an organization. Um, and that I just look at that as, you know, um, uh, financial security. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Just continue to expand and service parts that are expanding yeah. in Utah. That's, I, like, I like your thoughts on, on all this because you're thinking way ahead you know you, long term you plan, oh, yeah. yeah it's not yeah. something like let's see if this works or not you're like mm-hmm. okay we got to set the plan and, and figure out how exactly yeah. it's, it's going to work out yeah and i just 
I'm just making sure that all of that's working so that yeah. I have that financial security because being a tattoo artist, you can actually make a lot of money. You know, mm-hmm. you can make your first year tattooing um, what a what a what a first year what a doctor makes. Are you staying serious? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Um, easily because you know we're charging even at let's say you're starting off if if you're doing booth rental you keep it all and you just have to pay off your booth at the end mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, but usually that's uh, that works mostly when you have a clientele. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're coming into a commission based shop where they uh, they really do know what they're doing as we do, um, you start off with that like fifty percent. Mm-hmm. And a good example is my friend Michael. He he was making a lot of money as an apprentice at thirty mm-hmm. percent. But what he had was a drive. He had he he wanted mm-hmm. you know he was hungry for yeah. tattoos, um, and that's all you that's all you need to yeah. make money, man. Is a drive. That's all you need to mm-hmm. be anything. Yeah, is is uh you know that that perseverance, that dedication. You need to stay dedicated, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's all you eat. Yeah, you know sleep breathe is tattooing um i had to go through that and mm-hmm. i went through stages where i was pretty much in the negatives yeah because it was just so slow during the slow season mm-hmm. this is our slow season right now and i'm happy that i'm booked out yeah. actually um so things are getting better for me mm-hmm. but you need to really love tattooing yeah because anyone else would probably just quit tattooing and go do construction or get yeah. a real nine to five yeah. job it's yeah you have to give yourself to tattooing and tattooing will give back to you there's guys that um they did that exactly there's one when he drew he charges five thousand dollars a day i just saw that i think i, I don't know how i saw it but i saw that yeah five thousand dollars a day five thousand dollars per day oh wow to get tattooed by him and um he's a great tattoo mm-hmm. artist he really is uh great artistry great technique mm-hmm. um but the reason he charges that, because to be honest with you, there's tattoo artists out there that tattoo just as good, if not mm-hmm. better than him, but they yeah. charge half the price. Yeah. Um, 25 is still a lot, but yeah. that's what that's what I think it should be worth. Yeah. The reason is because he has a really good marketing strategy. Mm. He's, he's TikTok famous. Yeah. He does really good on Instagram. He interacts with his mm-hmm. clientele. Like he's doing things mm-hmm. right. Um, and also, he looks for other reasons and other ways to monetize. Mm-hmm. Like he has a, um, he has a what's it called Olympus Art Institute. Yeah. Where he he teaches oh, yes, ongoing artists or apprentices to mm-hmm. you know better and master their artistry, mm-hmm. um, and that's awesome. You know, yeah. being able to coach. I see that happening a lot everywhere. Mm-hmm. Is where they're they're coaching when they get good at something and they monetize off mm-hmm. of that. So on top of what he's getting paid to tattoo, yeah. he's also getting paid on a monthly basis with with that art yeah. institute. He's he's set for life. His kids yeah. are good, you know? Yeah. And he's young. That's awesome. So he gets to enjoy all of that. I want something similar. I don't yeah. need to coach. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. I have a slight passion for coaching. But um, I just want to service the community in a different mm-hmm. vision. So as an artist and as yourself, how do you how do you keep them evolving, you know? Like what's what's I mean, I can say what's the next step or what's or um, you know, I guess you can say if there's multiple steps to that, like how do you get there to? On the business side or on, on the, the artistry side? Uh both. I mean, I you know, whichever one you want to share first, but I uh, on the business side it's just uh making sure that that we're spending our investment correctly. Mm-hmm. So when we make money from the shop we we don't really we're not really making money much money off of it if any um we we put it right back into the business mm. um and that's what you should do yeah you know it's not like a it's not like a walk-in shop a booth rental shop where yeah. uh you just collect you know the monthly rent mm. now, what you can do is just continue opening shops like yeah. that where you continue to collect monthly rent with a commission-based shop you have the advantage of that if these artists are freaking amazing mm-hmm. um you collect you, from that you collect from that yeah but obviously if they're that good their cut is a lot bigger than yeah. what the shop collects uh-huh. but it's also an artist that is amazing yeah. that is going to attract attention they're coming into our shop mm-hmm. and they're going to know that that artist is in our shop yeah and they're going to know the name Dang. and they're going to want to recommend people to yeah. that so it's important for our artists to be yeah. good. We don't we don't just hire subpar. So when we do open other shops, mm-hmm. that that uh, that strong apprenticeship is still important. That's or awesome. um, also, we don't like to hire artists that are already trained. We like to hire apprentices. Mm. Um, 
just because from there we can teach them our business model yeah. and like like fully known artists that have been in the industry for a while they usually have a really can i cuss here oh yeah yeah i forgot to say it's explicit <laughs> i keep forgetting it's explicit you can say whatever you want they have a shitty apprenticeship yeah um uh and i try and be different mm -hmm. with my apprentices i try and be uh, more a teacher mm -hmm. than anything and i don't need to haze them yeah and i don't need to be an asshole to them or you know cuss them out or make them wash my car or anything yeah. like that yes i'll run them make them run errands and everything yeah. but i won't do any more than yeah. that um that's important yeah because they are gonna want to come to work they're gonna mm -hmm. want to be here they come mm -hmm. on their days off you know that's crazy it gives them more motivation yeah um and then, and then I try and just continue to tell all of the artists that exactly. Whenever I first hire them, I tell them our business model mm -hmm. and how they have to follow it. Yeah. And that's the only reason that you'll get fired, aside from just not doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you as, how do you evolve from like doing, so like, you know, your tattoo art artistry and, you know, you mentioned either you do plan or don't plan on doing coaching, but what, what are you kind of looking forward to? Uh... I just want to be able to do super cool tattoos. Mm -hmm. So my the way I look at myself in the next five years is I want to be booked out at least the two months. Mm. Um, two months is plenty for me, you know? If I yeah. continue to stay booked out for a two-month basis, yeah. awesome. If I start generating a waiting list, that's fine. That's awesome. Um, but two months gives me room to take vacations, mm. plan my days off a little bit more accordingly. Um, and every time that I do it, I just want to do something dynamic. Yeah. So what I just look for is just being able to do that mm -hmm. and then have my business running in the background and all mm -hmm. my artists doing whatever, what they love to do Yeah. and getting paid well for it. Um, I just well oiled machine. Yeah. I don't want to have to worry about not having a tattoo tomorrow and not being able to pay my rent. Yeah. Okay. And I just, it's just, I don't I just want to do what I love, tattooing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm in it. And, yeah. But at the same time, I, I do love the business end of stuff. But the goal is to continue to expand, but still dedicate my time to tattooing more. Yeah. And it's hard. It is very hard to do that. But you got to start it off first mm -hmm. before you can sit down and relax. Yeah. Dang. Um, as a... In, the, in that type of industry, is it, do you, with technology, like changing and, you know, uh, you can also say marketing, whatever it is, right? Is it something that you use the changing of technology to help out your business or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just those hubs, the, the social media hubs is what mm -hmm. we've been using. Um, well, the technology that we that I'd like to use more is AI. Mm -hmm. um, AI has been getting used a lot more in the tattoo industry, and I feel like it's revolutionizing everything yeah. because um, there's these there's these softwares now where you just type in what you want on like Chat GPT, yeah. um, or the language that you want on Chat GPT, and then slap it into um, these like uh, rendering like AI mm -hmm. generated yeah. uh, design makers. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. They design the tattoo for you. You just tell them what to do, and it comes out with like all of these different ones. Um, there's one in um, Discord where you just type it mm. in, and then it shows up, and it's yeah. really cool. That's awesome. Um, a lot of the times, they don't make sense. Yeah. But the really cool thing about it is that it's a whole different view on art. Yeah. That's coming from from technology. Yeah. You know, and now you just take that and you put it on someone else, and it's completely unique. Mm. You know, it's never going to get generated yeah. again. Yeah. And I love that. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. And being able to, you know, do like huge bag pieces and nice yes. sleeves, <laughs> you know, chess pieces, yeah. all just generated through AI. Not all, like, all of but, it. But yeah, get, yeah get, it's, it's like getting another uh, mm -hmm. area of inspiration. Another yeah, area to, exactly. You know. Exactly. Because in the end of the day, you know, the tattoo is still getting slapped on yeah. by these hands. And I don't have to follow the reference exactly. Yeah. That's that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I because I when I hear about technology AI and stuff like that, it's always to see what the industry, what the artists or you know whoever's sitting behind that, you know, mm. the desk. I guess you can say how they're using it to their advantages and how, yeah, how can make their businesses you yeah know, more efficient if if you know if you need that to help you out as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then 
also uh, tattoo machines are wireless now yeah which is really cool um coil machines are fine too you know mm -hmm. but they are intimidating to uh to the newcomers or people that just you know are clientele yeah uh we also have very seasoned clientele yeah. that have been getting tattooed for years but we want to be that tattoo shop that people look up and they're like, oh, this place looks friendly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I Thank want you. them to come in and they, I, I want them to, you know, feel feel comfortable. And buzzing like that is intimidating, yeah. you know, and going into your skin. I guess, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I feel like the wireless is just so much more convenient, too, yeah. you know. It's, it's more sanitary. Mm -hmm. There's less components involved. Um, we're also a fully disposable shop, so everything we use is completely mm -hmm. disposable. Aside from our machines, you know, yeah. those are wrapped properly for sanitary purposes and then um, autoclaved. Uh, but then, uh, or just a really, really, really good spray with yeah. mat aside. Um, but that's helped a ton. And then also they last like eight, five to 10 hours. Oh, wow. So it's fine for yeah. one whole day of tattooing. You just charge it up again. Yeah. And I have two machines. So if like yeah. one runs out of battery, she's the other one. If I'm yeah. doing a huge piece. It's it's been years. I mean, the first one I got was back in two thousand eight, so I, I think maybe and I was blacked out because it was a side piece of a rib. <laughs> so maybe I don't even remember like it, it being a wired one or whatever. But it was pretty, wired. Yeah, <laughs> I think back. Then, yeah, but it's just now. It's like for me, it's like uh, whatever you know. What the yeah. uh, because I really like, I guess knowing um, the artist. Like when my sister was telling me, oh yeah, it says very you know light with the hands is perfect. You know. So there's some for me it's like oh i trust this guy you know i'll mm -hmm. see what happened and and there's a spot for me like i feel like i when i was saying that you, everyone has a pain tolerance and for me like you definitely i would do this again you know because mm -hmm. it's, it's good you know it's addictive <laughs> yeah too. yeah the first few minutes are definitely they definitely yeah. suck but after that it's fine um it is very addicting because you get it on your you get it on your skin and it's on there forever mm -hmm. you know and it's a memory it's not a lot of parts of your body that you can look at aside from scars that you actually you yeah know, like fell on or something um that you can look at and they're like oh i remember that day mm -hmm. and you want it to be a good memory you know yeah. aside from the one where you were like blacked out yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah think before you ink yeah um but yeah it's a it's it's a whole it's a whole thing tattoos are super symbolic mm -hmm. it's the oldest one of the oldest forms of symbolism you know yeah self-expression yeah is tattoos they're, in, they're on cavemen yeah they've been around forever what i was uh my wife was i told her once i'm like man what is that um why does that car have so many like bumper stickers and shit like that <laughs> she's like it's the same thing as a as someone tattooing stuff on their body you know yeah she kind of remembers it and i'm like oh, fuck i guess you're right like, i'm over there talking shit and then <laughs> and it's like it's like me talking shit on someone that has tattoos you know like yeah i guess yeah I guess. But, but you know, I she, she just made like stop like judging, I guess, in a way because That's it's, true. It's, uh, the way they're expressing themselves there is it, it's people how they express themselves on their body, you know? Yeah, like people that take their like jeeps out and yeah. like, collect the sticker from every place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd rather do that with tattoos. I don't like bumper stickers on cars. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather just go somewhere else and get a cool tattoo for that yeah. place. Those are, that's been very popular. Mm -hmm. In Park City we get a lot of that. Yeah, like it's a lot more walking because it's right on Main Street mm -hmm. and it's a very very walk friendly zone yeah. like everyone around there's walking so there's a ton of people that are getting destination tattoos up there that's pretty sick yeah yeah, yeah no bumper stickers on cars for me though yeah <laughs> same way i feel i'm like i don't want to i feel like i'm gonna damage my my car right i'm gonna put yeah. like something to feeling it off if i change my mind yeah what if you change your mind yeah. over time but and when you take it off it's gonna have all that residue yeah. on your car <laughs> whether you think about it as a tattoo reference like well what if you change your mind but I don't know, like, I, I feel with tattoos is, like, the one on my side, right, uh, it's kanji, and I don't even know if it means what it means, right, like, with <laughs> karma, right, because I, at that time, I, and I, I believed it in a certain spiritual way, you know, yeah, not too different, but it's like, at the end of the day, it's my first tattoo, so why would I want to change it, you know, yeah. it, yeah, but not memory. everyone has, everyone's like, oh, I want to change it, I'm going to, but I'm like, eh, it's fine, yeah, it that's why I think, you, I think you should think before you ink, because it's, yeah. at the end, it's, it's a memory, you yeah. know, and you can't really change if you want if you yeah. want it to be good or bad when you're drunk, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you do have the option to, whenever yeah. you're sober. I don't think people really remember when they put a bumper sticker on their car. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, you know, fuck, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. 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 But like, I've heard like, why would you put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari? Yeah. Whenever they talk about tattoos, mm -hmm. 
it's not the same. You can be you can you can be very attractive and have a lot of tattoos, and if anything, they're gonna make you look better. Yeah, you know, don't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is is with the culture, right? As far as like us being Hispanic, mm-hmm. um, having family in you know Catholic or whatever religion, right? Was it um? Do you have usually have uh, clientele that usually have that same feeling like oh I want to do it or mm, yeah or, Mormon more yeah mm-hmm. and then <laughs> and then for you like what do you what do you say like how do you uh, on that? I just you know can't do anything gotta yeah. tattoo them <laughs> yeah <laughs> I definitely talk to them yeah. I like talking to my clients about that and yeah usually it's a lot of ex Mormons mm-hmm. that come in um, but once like it's if you get like a Latina like a Latino Latino um, teenager coming Mm. in with their parents to get tattooed usually the parents are tattooed too yeah i never really see them bringing someone that's someone (laughs) that isn't tattooed you know so they're uh they're a little more more uh liberal yeah latinos okay it's rare when i see that or if ever Mm -hmm. see something like that they're usually yeah like "Uh -uh, you ain't getting tattoos mijo yeah and uh even as much as they try and convince them they won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to uh, hear uh, ask how, what would you say inspires someone who's either starting off as entrepreneur, tattoo artist. What is something that you want to just be able to share with them? Um, if trying to be a tattoo artist and an entrepreneur, it's mm-hmm. just stay, stay, stay on the goal. You know, mm-hmm. you have to see the finish line. Mm. Don't uh, get tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. Focus on the on the end result and then think long term so coming into tattooing it's definitely important to uh to think long term um and it's hard Mm -hmm. because it's art Mm -hmm. and art is very subjective um so definitely definitely stay on 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 track and uh take an apprenticeship Mm -hmm. i didn't take an apprenticeship and I mean, it worked out for me. <laughs> it worked out it's for like, me. But an apprenticeship, now that I'm teaching it, yeah, you just it's just such a better experience and mm-hmm. it's such a better introduction to tattooing. Yeah. Um, taking an apprenticeship, just uh, definitely do your research. Very important to do your research on on uh, not just the like the location or like the tattoo mm-hmm. shop, but uh, just pay attention when you go into mm. a tattoo shop. Are they being sanitary? Mm. Is it does it feel right? Mm-hmm. Is the conversation okay with my yeah. artist? And if it feels sketchy, probably be like, ah, I'm gonna go to the next guys. And yeah. then you follow and come to us. Yeah. You know? Um, because we will talk to you nicely. Um, if you're looking for an apprenticeship, we'll always take an interview. Um, we might not be looking for artists at the time, but you know, if you have that drive, usually people will yeah. will notice. And we'll we'll definitely be interested if they have that drive. Mm. I had one of our apprentices right now came back like three or four times to show us his stuff because he didn't want to go to any other tattoo shop mm. because they're also expensive. Yeah, the apprenticeships can go up to fifteen thousand dollars. Shoot. Yeah, and ours is free. So he was like, yeah, <laughs> I want to go there. Yeah, that's but crazy. Yeah, it, you have to uh-huh. be on top of it though because he's there every single day. It's yeah. gonna it will eat your life up as an apprenticeship. So you really need to want. Yeah. and have that drive to be a tattoo artist uh-huh. and to be honest with you same with business you know yeah. opening a business does take up a lot of your time you know yeah. you're not working a nine to five anymore you're working a nine to nine yeah all day all the time in order for it to work just with the yes you mentioned the, the uh, apprenticeship do you think um how does that is that kind of the same thing as networking right because you're getting to meet a tattoo artist but they're also doing the job for- oh yeah so do you say that's like a big so i guess you could say that yes do apprenticeship like you mentioned right but how do you does that kind of connect with being networking you as an artist with other other artists or other entrepreneurs um with other entrepreneurs i don't know this is a good start you know i don't know a lot just uh my uh my business partner Mm -hmm. he's very knowledge in this type of stuff um as an apprentice as an artist that's tough for me man it's kind of weird for me to make friends. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as a, as a as an apprentice, uh, you can do a ton to market yourself, you know. Mm. And you can do the same thing as an artist. But basically, it's just talking to people, you mm. know. 
apprentices they don't try so they're like you want a free tattoo yeah like, yes 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 it's harder for me because i'm like hey you want to give me 160 dollars an hour yeah for a whole day yeah you know because it's, it's more of an investment mm-hmm. than what they come with me um so my networking happens when i tattoo other people mm-hmm. and then they do it for me mm. that's how i try and try and do stuff um oh okay i get it yeah know, just to give good ass work yeah that people want to ask hey man who the fuck did that i need to get their information yeah. right now that's the type of artist that i want to be you know yeah. i don't want to have to be selling myself like that all mm-hmm. the time when i have a conversation that's at least that's what i tried mm-hmm. i definitely did it when i started yeah a lot um but now um i just want to let my work speak for itself because mm. i'm not good at talking <laughs> yeah yeah oh, at least the strangers you know yeah at least not with some some alcohol that i'm not buying yeah <laughs> you know, it's what i mean it's like all these lights cameras and stuff like that but <clears throat> i think like i just said just have that you know we're just having conversation i'm i'm getting to know you and even if i do right if i met you when i met you earlier like i'm like okay i, I Either I'll ask him the questions and then I'll ask him again because I want it to, for, you know, to everyone to understand and see that that side. And also knowing that this is what I'm doing because people are seeing that side of, you know, more personal, but also knowing, okay, like mm-hmm. the, your thoughts, you know, yeah. that you sometimes you probably wouldn't share with someone. Oh, yeah. I don't really talk about this with my clients. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I usually, it's, it's more of a therapy session when yeah. I talk to someone. They kind of talk to me. Yeah. Because I'm just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah and then they just go they go they just talk yeah. and that's that's why it's called tattoo therapy yeah yeah I'm, I'm somewhat of a therapist <laughs> yeah <laughs> you like come out with after you like you tell your wife you're like oh you know got my cert on yeah. therapy because uh yeah that's sick, i'm like babe i got some cheese man yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you know yeah small like city too right uh-huh. so you just seriously. like seriously <laughs> yeah everyone kind of so once i met this big mood big buddha uh-huh i realized that everyone's kind of connected yeah. through him at least like even some. even the younger crowds yeah like because he goes to schools and stuff yeah. too that's crazy so be like oh yeah i know him yeah and that's that's really cool because once they see him they're like oh yeah my tattoo artist tattoos him mm. you know um but yeah that's, that's how awesome. it starts yeah um so this is the the time i leave i want to leave time for just you here um you share your social media accounts um show uh share where someone can um find you you know if you want to share a phone number you can yeah. email whatever it is this is your time and then it's also if you have anything additional that you want to share to the guests um this is your your spot your time and you know you can go ahead says that. okay um so if you want to book with me, <laughs> um, my Instagram is core tats. That's C O R R underscore T A T S. Um, and you can find me at one love Uh, just as it sounds, um, you'll find all my work there and you can book with me there. Uh, t- uh deposits are non-refundable. Mm. That's Do you show up or you don't? <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's what, that's what every tattoo yeah. shop, uh-huh. um, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm excited to meet you. Yeah. Well, it was a great time uh, having uh, Cesar here just to go um, over, you know, questions and share and just see what's inside his brain, you know. Um, so I want to, you know, personally thank you for taking time, um, especially weekend and all this other stuff, right? Yeah, and man. Weather. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. But, uh, you know, I, I appreciate just you sharing this. Um, I can't thank you enough. And excited for this episode to be shared and and um just with everyone you know thanks man so, thanks for having me appreciate this that fun. <laughs> thank you all right everyone again this is uh the, uh visions to ventures with your host javier